And we're talking to Kevin, who also has uh, another question. Is that right, Kevin? Yes, sir. Uh, my mother is 145 pounds, five foot three. She's got that Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and oh, she yeah. said it's that, that middle state of globular. It's like not liquid, not uh, hardened, so it's sort of both. She yeah. said all her numbers were good, except that she's worried about that antigen level. She wants to know how to lower it. I told her ORAC value, but I didn't know if that was the right way to say it or or anything like that. And I guess for scolin is a is a plant that she was interested in trying, and I wanted to get your input on for scolin. It might be referred to by another name, more common name, starting with starting with the letter C. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, for scolin. Yeah, yeah. coleus for scolin. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, so we don't need to worry about that. What we do need to worry about when it comes to the thyroid is the neck. And uh, most of the patients that I've seen that have any type of a thyroid condition, regardless of the diagnosis, right, whether it's underactive, whether it's overactive, whether it's Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, or whatever the heck it is, simple goiter, most of these patients have a problem with their neck and that the curve in their neck is not correct. Uh, there needs to be a a gentle S-curve in the whole spine from the base of the skull to the tailbone. If you look at somebody's profile, someone who's healthy, the, the spine has a nice little S-curve to it, and it starts in the neck. And if the neck, the curve is reversed, I've seen the curve be reversed, I've seen people's neck be completely straight, no curve at all, that's going to compromise the nerve signals that are coming out of the cervical discs uh, that feed the thyroid. So... One thing we need not overlook when we're helping somebody to support and promote the health of their thyroid gland is their cervical spine. So I would find a good chiropractor, um, have them do a digital x-ray uh, of the neck from a, a side location and check to see whether the neck is put on the body straight. And if it's not, then your mom's going to have to get on board with some type of chiropractic adjustment on a regular basis to reassert the curve in her neck. And when that happens, life is going to be much better for the thyroid gland because the nerve signals that are going to be coming out of the neck are going to be 100%. And, you know, that's better than 50% or less, okay? So that's number one. Number two, the three things that the thyroid gland needs to be healthy are iodine, selenium, and copper. Iodine, selenium, and copper. So we want to emphasize the use of iodized table salt with anybody that has a thyroid problem, number one. So, you know, it's with someone with a pre-existing thyroid condition, in order to support and promote the health of the thyroid, we would need to do more than we would for maintenance of the thyroid gland. So in this regard, uh, to accomplish that end, I would recommend uh, 12 selenium a day, forward breakfast, forward lunch, and forward dinner. And by the way, uh, it is possible to take too much of selenium. It's hard. It's possible, though. Um, I've only known one person in four years of doing this that this has happened to. If you take too much of the ultimate selenium, uh, you get, your breath gets a fishy, garlicky odor. Your hair starts to get a little dry, and your fingernails will split. If those symptoms start to happen, you just back off on the dosage, you know, by 20%, okay? Um, but that's just a cautionary tale at best, all right? Now, the, the last thing that we can do in our armamentarium here for, to support and promote the health of the thyroid is the sea kelp formula that's loaded with copper and selenium and iodine um, and a bunch of other things as well that feed uh, the thyroid gland appropriately. So with Hashimoto's thyroiditis with a pre-existing thyroid condition, I would go for break. would take six or nine a day, depending on what the budget can afford. Now, with any type of itis anywhere in the body, whether it's arthritis or thyroiditis or pancreatitis or whatever it is, we, of course, want to increase ORAC because ORAC, itis, means inflammation, and ORAC is anti-inflammatory. So we want to increase our consumption of anything that has anti-inflammatory activity, however you want to do that, whatever in the budget. 